Hey guys, am I glad you clicked on this video because we're gonna have a really fun time today. Let me ask you a question. Do you wanna go for a ride on the rails? Yes, you heard that question correct. That's because in this video, we'll be riding on the railroad tracks on one of these, a railroad speeder. If you wanna join me, there's only one thing left to say, and that is, come along with me because it's time to all aboard. For those of you who are not too familiar with railroad speeders, these are basically maintenance away vehicles used back in the day by railroad companies. They were used to maintain, repair, update railroad tracks. Some of them may have had attachments or mechanical arms attached to them. Others, like these ones here, were used for the transportation of crew members to take the crewmen or the workmen to the job site. And now, private individuals and groups do buy them and run them for their own leisure on sanctioned railroad runs like this one. Now this is not my first time riding on one. I've actually ridden on about a half a dozen of them at Steamtown's Rail Fest. There's a group that does bring theirs there and they run them on a about a hundred yard section of track and they get free rides there. All you have to do is sign the waiver at Steamtown. So I have ridden on them before only on a short section of track but I've always wanted to do a long excursion like this and I never think or never thought I would have the opportunity. That was until one of my viewers sent me an email. He's like, hey JP, I know you're into railroad stuff. I have a speeder, I have a run coming up. And if you want, you're welcome to join me. I absolutely jumped at the opportunity because not every day you get asked that, hey, do you wanna ride on the rails on a railroad speeder? So that brings us to here today. We are here in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. And we're riding on what is known as the Storebridge Line. This is a seasonal excursion route where they give excursion routes to different destinations here in the operating season. With the whole COVID situation right now, the line is not operational for excursions. So they took the opportunity to get this sanctioned run done and utilize the tracks. So I don't know what we're gonna see along the route. I've never done an excursion through Storebridge, but regardless, it's gonna be a really awesome, unique, and just downright fun experience. And we're gonna speak to the gentleman right here in the orange, his name is Hank. He is the one who reached out to me he is one of my viewers and the owner of this open air speeder. And he's going to share some of the information about it. Now a little bit more information. These are manufactured by a company called Fairmount. There's actually one back here with the stamp on the front of it. Right there. And these ones weigh anywhere between 500 to 1,000 pounds. His is the smallest and lightest at around 400 pounds. So it's a more portable, more maneuverable, but still it is, I believe, gas powered and runs on the rails just like the rest of them. Some of them are retrofitted with air horns, uh, LED lighting, um, probably climate controlled in some of them, I believe too. So some of them could be really customized and some of them are loud, but like I said though, regardless, it is gonna be such a really cool experience. This one's gonna be more enjoyable though because we're gonna have an open air design. You get to kind of see 360 as to what we're looking at. And what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be filming with this phone, my camera right here that we're using right now. I also have my action camera to get some different side perspectives. And I brought my little magnetic cube camera to mount somewhere down low so we'll get some close to the rail action. So between the three cameras, we should have some pretty cool visuals and it should make for an enjoyable video. Hey, my name's Hank and uh, this is my speeder. And I searched out JP here. I've been watching his videos now for a good part of a year. and. Just invited him to come ride my speeder with me here in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. This is a sanctioned meet that the railroad here is having. Uh, we're practicing social distancing and the railroad can't run trains because there's too many people inside the coach. So we're doing this. And this is an M9. It's made by a company called Fairmont. It's built in 1952 or thereabouts and originally had a two cycle engine ran on gas and oil mixed together. The engine is not there anymore. I re-engined this myself. It has a modern, if you come back here, has a modern Subaru Robin four cycle in the back. Sort of like a go-kart, and uh, but it does have a snowmobile centrifugal CVT and a gearbox so you can go forward and reverse. So it's been re-engined with modern tech, but the body and the brakes and everything else is original from the 1950s. Those are recently redid the brakes. They do wear out just like any vehicle. And uh, this is the only open car here today. There's probably over 20 uh, speeders here today. And uh, I haven't seen another open one, but a lot of railroads when they bought them, 
they didn't cut the the body or the the cab was an option and the railroads wanted to save money so back in the old days they rode open this is basically the replacement for the pump car when the internal combustion engine came about in the early 1900s someone slapped one on a hand car and this is how this came about these were phased out in the 1980s in favor of the high rail trucks that you've probably seen on JP's other videos where they put little wheels down on the line and uh, it's just a regular truck with tires and that way there the railroad employees there's actually one up front today that that way they can just go to where they need to work go to a crossing drop it on the tracks and go to where they need to be and then they can get off the tracks and drive back on the highway where these were basically bound to the rail so they phase these out but they're called motor cars or speeders or rail cars and uh, there's a company not a company a club called Narcoa North American Rail Car Operators Association and they sanction these runs all over the country on different railroads um, you just got to be a member you got to find yourself a speeder you can buy them um, out of junkyards or from other people fix them up sometimes you can get them all ready to go they vary anywhere from as little as eight hundred dollars up to fifteen thousand depending on the condition and size and like that thing is probably ten grand or more that's a beautiful uh, Fairmont that's an MT 14 there's different model numbers mine's an M9 it's the smallest there's M19s are the most common I think this one here yep this is an M19 it's actually an MT 19 because it has a Onan two-cylinder four cycle motor with a clutch. If you can hear that sound, that is a putt putt. That's the original motor that was in mine. The uh, two cycle uh, flywheel based hit or miss engine. I bet you guys can imagine which one I would pick, right? Right there, nice blue one. We're getting ready right to depart here, so we'll see you on the speeder. Everybody's doing their final checks and getting ready to depart. Nearly everyone's running. A little smoky, a little noisy, but that's the way it is when it comes to railroad equipment. I'm going to be riding in the middle, the saddle seat, kind of sitting side saddle on the way down. And the return trip, I'm going to be sitting in this seat here. So you'll see different perspectives as we travel both directions. And you'll be able to kind of experience what it's like to ride on one of these from both positions. But it's going to be a fun time, though, I'll tell you that. So a little change of plans due to the generosity of someone here, instead of me riding in side saddle, I'm going to be riding in this Fairmont that we showed earlier, this burgundy one. He's got an extra seat. He's like, hey, you're welcome to come with me if you want. So I'm going to ride the way up in this one, and then his friend Pete's going to switch with me. I'm going to ride back on Hank's open speeders. So you're going to see two different speeders, two different complete views, and two completely awesome experiences. All right, so I'm in the uh, red or burgundy Fairmont here with my new friend Al. He was polite enough to invite me in. He said he had an extra seat. And if you want, uh, just to basically share, share some information about your, your vehicle here. Well, it's an MT-19. It's a Pennsylvania car. Uh, it's got a Les King cab, so it's all been redone and everything. It's got a 20 horse uh, motor in it, the high, high low transmission and everything. So that's pretty much the basics of it. Okay. So it's gonna be a pretty cool experience. We're gonna be covered here protection wise with the cab. And again, I'm gonna ride the first half of it with him, and then me and Pete are going to switch. I'm going to ride the second half with Hank, and you'll be able to see both vehicles and get different perspectives. The only thing is I can't mount the cube cam anywhere because it's this one's all aluminum, and any metal pieces, it's going to vibrate off. So we're going to use the camera here. I do have my Osmo Action for some outside wide shot perspectives, but for the most part, you're going to get a cab side view as if you're riding here with us. All right, looks like we are departing here.
pretty cool. Trains. I didn't know we're gonna be going across the crossings. And this is kind of the best way to do social isolation. I mean, like a parade of us. I think there's between 20 and 30 of us, they said.
tell me too, it's going to be a nice rock cut area and a nice sweeping bend of the river. So once we reach that, we'll definitely give you some views of it. So we're about our halfway point. We are in Hawley, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of the Lake Wall and Pawpack area, about halfway to our destination of Lake Wax, and just taking like a little break here to kind of stretch the legs. But we're gonna keep moving though, onwards and upwards. Don't forget on the way back, we're gonna be in an open air car. So it's gonna be an equally as impressive and unique experience. All right, and away we go. I've been through Hawley before, but never by rail or on a speeder, so it's a first for me. Don't forget, if you guys are enjoying this adventure, not many people come out for this for you. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, show your support. Looks like we have a blue or a teal caboose over there. This is Holly Station. I guess this is maybe one of the stops for the Storbridge line. The loading station, it's a really nice bench is there. We do have signal crossings here, but they keep going up and down based on the contact that the uh, feeders are making, so gotta proceed with caution. Got some spotters up here. Now we're going across the bridge. That's pretty neat.
power plant coming up here and it's a big place. I go up to the tank. Massive. Check that out. It's probably the only way you can get a good view of it too. That is pretty big. video too but this doesn't happen all that often so I want to make it worthwhile for myself and for you guys as well. Look at this rock cut here. That is really awesome. another brief pit stop here and this is the last car and of course we got all the way up leading with the high railer the SUV so definitely a unique enjoyable and very fun experience I'm very grateful though that this gentleman was able to let me ride with him so that we're not cramped on Hank's ride but again I'm looking forward to riding on Hank's because not only did he invite me out but it's completely open air no restrictions so even though I'm not going to film the entire ride back, I'm going to give you, you know, a fair amount of footage to see what it's like to ride on his. But he told me, you know, he's like, hey, you know, we're actually semi-local to each other. He's like, if I do another local run, I'll definitely let you know. So, and I'm looking right here. It's actually a set of steps. I don't know. There's steps going up the mountainside. I want to show you them really quick. They're pretty neat. But... Seems like a great bunch of people and an uh, enjoyable hobby. That one's putting along. It's got a flywheel in there, I believe. Here's the steps, though. They go all the way up. I don't know where they go to, but whoever constructed it's pretty neat. How's the ride? <laughs> great. You guys are clipping along pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait till you ride this open going that fast. This spot at a mother and a fawn down here, right along the river. And some bikers passing by right above. That's nice though, right along the river's edge. Hanging out in the shade. Mother's going to investigate, I think. Try zoom in on the fawn a little bit more. It's going to get blurry though. Oh, there he goes. That was a nice little catch. So one thing I was wondering, and I got to explain to you, but now we're going to watch it happen, is how do they turn these things around? The bigger ones actually have a, like a arm that comes down and it lifts the carp in the air and they rotate it around. And we're going to watch that happen on some of these. He's going to pull his 
stop it over this, and the arm's gonna come down, it's like a plate, which is gonna cause it to lift up and he'll just rotate it around. Actually, hey, draw like arm. That is neat. But it doesn't get any simpler than that. Not much. So Hank's here, he has to actually physically lift his up and rotate it around. So it takes some muscle and some hard work, but that's what it takes to turn it around. Now he's facing the proper direction. Okay, so this is the reason I came today is to ride on Hank's chariot. Pete went with Al. I'm gonna be taking this seat right here and we're gonna return the whole route all the way back to Honesdale. I'm not gonna show as much as I did along the way, but any scenic views like the rock cuts some of the trusses uh, that we went across, I will share that as well. But this one is gonna be a lot noisier, probably a lot more windier, so you may or may not be able to hear me. If you can't, I will overlay some music, but we're getting ready to leave, so hop aboard. Another experience. on a roller coaster.
just a quick pit stop here. Clouds are rolling in. Hopefully it doesn't rain. I didn't think it was supposed to, but I know. <laughs> we'll see. But just to show you the line of cars, though, they're still coming back there. And here's the wind. Definitely a whole other experience, though, riding back on an open-air car as compared to one with a cab. I will say, though, if it starts raining, I'm going to be wishing I was in Al's burgundy one because you'd be protected from the rain. But this one, though, is like a roller coaster. This thing is scary and exhilarating at the same time. And when I do my outro, I'll share my thoughts on everything. But so far, as long as it doesn't rain, it's been a fantastic time. So we'll see how the rest of the trip plans out. We've got about halfway to go still. So we do got our bridge we're going over. If you see me cross them on foot, now you'll see first-hand perspective on the speeder. I'll give you a over-the-edge shot here. Not terribly high, but high enough. I feel safer crossing it on this, although I am sitting near the edge. That is a pretty neat experience. You can see the clouds, though. They're looking pretty ominous. Fingers crossed. It doesn't rain at least until we get back. Nice houses. And I got one more bridge running across up here. This one you can't see over the sides. And I just felt a raindrop. Kayakers down there. Oh yeah, we can see the bottom. No man way to walk across that one. And we're back near the Holly Station. The teal caboose in the distance. up thankfully only a few raindrops and we're in the home stretch here in Honesdale equipment up here, the locomotives and the passenger cars. This used to be serviced by rail. The 
siding there. It looks like some of their older equipment here. New Haven. There's a AB unit. That CP rail? I believe so. 1019 slug. It's like a three three tone paint job on that one. I love seeing the older equipment. That hasn't ran for a long time. And we've got the Copper King Express. This looks like a fairly in good shape passenger car, coach car. And behind that's a box car and a boost that may be Conrail if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Conrail Caboose. How about that? Sparky, if you happen to be watching, hope you're enjoying this one here. Hopefully I get saved. That's a nice piece. Derailer there. Here's the caboose. This is their active equipment, I believe. This is in really good shape. Looks almost brand new. Check out these cabooses. Wow, gorgeous. their powered equipment. This is what the Storbridge line uses for their excursions. That one almost looks like an Amtrak. Erie Lackawanna. That's a nice F unit there. There's some Pullman coach cars. This one's the William Penn. It's there's books in there like a library. Horatio Allen. And Clinton Lee. And down there we got some kayakers. Trestle. That was the biggest one yet. Some more kayakers. Good day for it. Clickety clack of the tracks. I showed earlier, here's some semi-modern, more modern maintenance away equipment used to repair the rails. That one's got like an excavator arm on it. He used to service that industry there. Church almost. Like an abandoned section of track, even though it's not, but it's kind of overgrown. 
gives it a different feel to it. Everybody's back there kind of um, taking care of the machines. Some people are sticking around for a nighttime ride, doing the same route, only in darkness, which is gonna be a really awesome thing. Others are departing for today. But I just wanna say I had such an incredible time. A huge, huge thank you to Hank for reaching out to me because if it wasn't for my YouTube channel, I wouldn't have had this opportunity. He wouldn't have known about me. And thankfully he is one of my viewers and was thoughtful enough to say, hey, JP, you wanna join me today? And it worked out incredibly well because I ended up meeting Al, who ended up giving me a ride in his on the way down, got to see two different types of speeders, and got to have two incredible experiences. But special thanks to both of them because they are great guys, and the whole group in general, very polite, you know, they're inquisitive, they're like, hey, what are you filming for? So I'm sure they're gonna check out the channel and the video. If you guys already happen to be watching, it's great to meet you guys. And you guys have a really awesome hobby, if you want to call it that. But I definitely see myself doing this in the future. I know it's expensive. I know there's a lot of legalities that are involved with it. But if these guys could do it, I could certainly do it. And it's about as close as you could get to riding, you know, a train car down the tracks, being your own engineer. And I have to say, it's night and day with both of those speeders. The cab over one, not the cab over, but the one with the cab was a rough ride because it doesn't have suspension but you're protected for weather and you got to kind of see more of like an interior cab and it's um just a whole nother species of vehicle the other one that hank drives is completely open completely awesome and that was like riding a roller coaster that thing was so fun <laughs> i had a blast on it but <clears throat> Uh, I will say though, riding on it though, at upper speeds, we got close to 30 miles an hour. It felt like I was on Indiana Jones Temple of Doom on the mine car. It was just like hanging on tight, holding on, and just, you know, experiencing as you go. It was like, you know, a whoosh of excitement going over me. So he's doing the nighttime ride. I unfortunately can't stick around for that, but um, he does have a YouTube channel, which is Rail Ventures. Rail Ventures. I will put a link down below in the description. He does put out some content from time to time. So if you want to check out some more maybe speeder videos and see what he does, make sure you subscribe and um, let him know that JP Video sent you. I do want to thank you though for letting me come with you Very today. Welcome. It was a great experience. I had a fantastic time. So you have an awesome speeder too. That was thank like you. a roller coaster. <laughs> I'm a big roller coaster enthusiast and my favorite park is Knobel. Yes, mine too. So Knobel's fans here. But anyways, guys, if you happen to enjoy today's adventure, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more railroad related videos, check the link down below in the description. And lastly, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and feel free to follow me on Facebook. Everything can be found down below in the description. With that said, thanks for joining me today. Hope you have a fantastic day. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.